Yo, what is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We are finishing out the end of the year with a bunch of sparring rolling sessions with a bunch of blue belts. A lot of people got promoted to blue and purple at the end of the year like a lot of schools like to do. So I wanted to showcase some of these blue belts that recently got promoted. So we have one right here who is playing a daily Heva game and ends up taking me down to my post on my right hand. And I'm kind of going to just let him play his game. I want to see what he wants to do. I'm going to not really, I'm not really trying to put a lot of pressure on him. I'm basically working on trans transitions my goal is to just focus on transitions and getting into good positions and allowing him to work so you're going to see me make some common mistakes and some not so common mistakes uh, mistakes that i normally wouldn't make in a competition setting but that's how you get better you allow people to work their games and you find a way to work what you want to work while they're working their games so here i was able to stop his inversion by pulling his feet back when he was halfway through the inversion and getting him into a turtle position and then just kind of shifting my hips and getting into the side control position as you can see now what I'm going to do is start isolating his left arm by wrapping his lapel around the arm and basically using that as leverage to take that arm out of the fight and put a lot of pressure on his neck and shoulder area so now that I've got that locked up I'm going to start getting into a neon belly position but I'm kind of lazy with it and I don't really get into the mount and that allows him to kind of turn to his side and catch my leg on the way back out but I'm not too worried that he caught my leg because now I'm going to force him to play a half guard position and that's how I'm going to pass his guard. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to sit to my left hip, make it extremely uncomfortable on top of him by putting my left shoulder into his face. And then once I'm ready, once I'm situated, I'm going to use my right hand to grab his pant leg. I'm going to force my knee above his knee line. And that's going to give him the option here to bump up and hip into me. But when he does that, he has to put his foot on the mat, which allows me to step my foot out and then pass into the side control position as you can see. So now that I've solidified the side control position, what I want to do is use Neon Belly to transition to the back. So when we get to that point, I'm going to talk about how I like to set that up. But my opponent is going to stop me from getting a full on Neon Belly by turning away. And I'm going to follow him while he turns, keeping my shoulder pinned to his back so he can no longer put his back on the mat and get out of this back taking kind of a position situation that he's in. So now that I've kind of forced him to stay on his side, I'm going to take my right knee and put it on his on on his hip area not a full neon belly but just rested on his hip and then with my left leg i'm going to use it and get parallel to his back roll over that left leg and start taking the back position now it's a matter of just getting my first hook in and then i'm able to kind of bump him up and get the second hook in and now i can start attacking the back proper now like i said earlier in the video i'm really just working on transitions and timing i'm not going to put a competition style brown belt game on a brand new blue belt i want him to be able to work his defenses but also work some of his offense so i'm going to go for some submissions throughout this role but i'm not going to try to lock them up i'm just going to just transition from submission and position uh into other positions and submission attempts so now that i've got his back i'm going to start using my right arm to kind of feed around his neck and i'm going to grab that far lapel i'm going to cinch it up and make sure that it's nice and tight nice and deep around his neck just to threaten the bow and arrow choke and i'm going to take my left arm to grab his pant leg and then grab the pant leg and start transitioning my feet into a bone arrow my right leg is going to come up and over around to his shoulder and and that's how I would finish the bone arrow. But I'm going to let that go and opt for a different back taking position, uh, back taking submission and position here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm kind of just like free flowing and trying to figure out what type of submission I want to go for. There's a ton of options here because my right leg is kind of crossing over his body for a body lock triangle position. And that's when we're going to get into this dilemma where there's so many different submission options. And because there's so many, I'm going to try to go for them all. And what happens when you go for a lot of submissions without really focusing on one you end up losing the entire uh position so here i've kind of got like a body lock triangle position his arm is isolated so there's arm bars and kimuras and also wrist locks there but i'm going to go for a mounted uh triangle position so i come up on onto my hips onto my knees and then i start locking up the triangle position by getting my right leg under and locking it behind my left leg which requires me to kind of angle my body and post on my head but when i do that i'm going to lose the entire position he's going to slip out kind of like my role with brown belt ray and uh, now he's in an open guard position and now he can start trying to work his offensive game here 
But just because I said I want him to work his offensive game doesn't mean I'm going to make it easy for him. I'm going to tuck my body under him, get into a deep half position, roll on my hips and come up for the sweep, which is going to allow him to play an open guard position. Now, normally I would be doing like my tried and true type of passing, but here I just want to flow and see what he's going to give me and try to implement this tripod passing position that I've been trying to work a little bit more often and see if it works well with my over under. So what better way to test it out than use it on brand new blue belts? So now that I've um, worked that a little bit, I'm going to give him the chance to play a deep De La Hiva. Now, normally he's, his left leg is going to get a deep De La Hiva and normally I would make sure that that daily heva wouldn't be that deep and he wouldn't be off center like that because that's a good way to sweep somebody backwards but i'm going to allow him to do it because i want to i want him to work a little bit and i want to see like what i can do if i end up getting caught in this position in competition so we're going to switch to the center because we ended up bumping into the people above us and i'm going to allow him to get back into this deep daily heva position because i want him to play from there and see what he can set up so i'm going to start focusing on his right foot uh, instead of worrying about the deep daily heva and he's going to shoot that all the way to the other hip and then with his right hand he's going to grab my belt and and transition to the back position and then he's going to push me backwards and now he's taking my back but I'm going to hold my leg up and make sure he doesn't get any hooks in I'm going to grab his pant leg I'm going to turn into him and I'm going to turn this back taking position into kind of like a waiter x position I'm going to grab his foot come up and now I'm in like the x guard a uh, single leg x position and then I'm just going to come up and start passing once again so I wanted to see if he would do anything from the back taking position see if he would uh, capitalize on that or try to transition him out while I worked my defense um, and now I'm gonna hop over and now I've got him back inside control again now that I've passed the guard I'm kind of just gonna flow and see what he gives me I'm not really gonna attack from this position I'm just gonna see what he wants to do and then adapt accordingly so he's gonna start doing a Homer Simpson walk and I'm just gonna follow him by keeping my chest to his shoulder not allowing his back to touch the mat and then when he finally settles down I'm gonna post on my feet and put a lot of pressure on the shoulder wait for him to kind of like calm down and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my right leg up to his hip and then get into a technical mount and then use my left foot and keep it parallel to his back so I can roll over that foot once again and take the back like I did earlier in the video. Now that I've taken the back, I'm just going to kind of coast. I'm going to allow him to escape, but I am going to put pressure on his neck like I would if I was actually going for a choke here. So he's going to do the proper escape by getting his back to the mat. Now, if your back is on the mat, the person that's attacking your back can no longer be on your back, but he's going to allow me to transition into a mount. And from here, I'm just going to go right back to the back and I'm just, just going to do it in reverse. I'm going to bring my left leg up this time for a technical mount, use my right leg parallel to his back, and then roll over that right leg and take the back once again. And when I rock back, it's set up perfectly for a bone arrow choke. I look at the time. There's not that much time left. I'm going to let go of the leg and set up this quasi triangle body lock position. And that's going to be the end of the roll. So the main takeaway here is just allow your lower belt training partners to work some of their offense and defense. Don't always try to go for the submission. Don't always try to go for your competition game against lower belts. Allow them to experiment and work. And that also will allow you to work on your transitions and positions. But if they decide to spaz, put it on them. That is the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching and thank you guys for supporting the channel. It truly does mean more than you know. Now, my upload schedule is about to be a little bit disjointed because we are currently moving from California back to the Midwest and my computer is going to be in a U-Haul for the next few days, but I'm trying to upload a few videos before I have to pack this stuff away. But bear with me because the videos will be coming. This is just a temporary kind of adjustment here, so I might just have one upload for next week and a few shorts. But uh, we will be back with all the content and some new content when I join my new old gym so that's the end of the video thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you on the next one peace